this is my scrappy gorilla garden. It's just a strip along a side road, but lots and lots and lots of people pass by it. So about four years ago, it was all just sort of grass and weeds. It wasn't unpleasant, but I just thought it could be a nicer space. With some friends, I started working on it. And some things have done really well, and other things have been lost, and it got quite weedy. I want to plant it up with lots and lots of flowers, so you kind of are greeted when you come around the corner with this lovely, floriferous edge. It's actually like any other back garden. It's got reasonable soil, it's got big trees, there's some shade issues, it can be quite dry because trees compete. It needs plants just like you want in your own back garden that don't require too much of you. This is the evergreen collection. They're all quite small evergreen shrubs, so it's perfect for a small garden. They're not going to get massive. Um, they, many of them will flower, so they have another sort of season of interest in that way. And they all like semi-shady conditions. So they'll be happy in full sun, they'll be happy in part shade. So this is Choisia Sundance. Sundance because the new growth has this yellow flush to it. So when the whole thing is in flower, it has these fantastic, very pretty, quite small white flowers that have this heavenly scent of orange blossom. I'm digging a bigger planting hole than the pot size because I want to incorporate some of this well-rotted farmyard manure into the space. So it will just enrich the soil, so it will stop the plant from drying out and just means it that it will establish really, really well. This is a really beautiful plant and see there's good new growth. That's where all the little white roots are. It's quite a loose root ball, so I don't really need to tease it out much. And the most important thing is you don't want to bury it much past the nursery line. This is Skimia japonica rubella. It has these very simple but very elegant shiny green leaves. A very reliable little evergreen for this kind of condition. It doesn't mind poor soil, it doesn't mind partial shade, and it's not too fast growing that you have to kind of worry about maintenance or pruning or anything like that. This one is called Blonde Beauty. It's low growing, has very small flowers, sometimes it's followed by fruit. They're quite tolerant, you want as long as it's free draining and they don't sit in too much water, they don't mind this kind of soil. But a little bit of food just helps get the plants established. Into the soil, firm it down, and then I'm going to mulch with farmyard manure around it just so that it sets off. If you have a really small garden or a small space, what you want to make sure, particularly if you're going to plant shrubs, is that they have a long season of interest. So you get a nice new flush of new growth, it has an interesting colour, you get flowers that appear for a long period. Each plant really matters in a tiny space. This is the flowering shrub collection. We have the Ceanothus repens, which is a low-growing, ground colour of the Ceanothus. It's evergreen and it has this nice shiny green foliage. It will just sort of scramble along the ground, essentially. It likes really free-draining soil. You don't want to put it in really rich soil. It will just grow really leggy and unpleasant. So I'm going to put a tiny bit in. In slightly poorer soil, be very happy. And when it flowers, it's just a, a beautiful sight. This is the hydrangea rosy summer. Hydrangeas grow to quite substantial shrubs. They have those big, crazy, pink, oof, oof, fluffy flowers. The good thing about hydrangeas is they're really easy to please. They're not very fussy about the soil. They're very nice if you're just in this scenario where they'll just get left on the bush and there'll be a little bit of interest through the autumn. They'll look quite nice when the frost catches them. Here we have Spirea golden flame. And it's called Golden Flame because the new foliage has this sort of quite orangey pink flush. It's a pretty tough thing, spireas. They're quite hard to make unhappy. As long as you establish it well with a little bit of food in the soil, you really don't have to worry about these kind of shrubs. They just look after themselves. So these are all plug plants and they will come in these very clever little plastic cases. And the whole point is you can put them through the post and you get six what look like very small plants, but you're really getting value for money. You're going to establish these plants young, they'll establish really well, and you can make lovely drifts of colour. I have some Tradescantia. They've got very strap-like leaves, and they look like a child has drawn the flower. Very, very intense colours. 
not entirely frost hardy so it's a good idea to put them somewhere where that's a little bit sheltered this is fine because the trees will keep off any of the worst and the good thing about tradescantia is they're really happy in poor soil and they don't mind shade these are verbascum phenicum verbascum has a kind of tall spire for a flower with these little flat flowers really attractive, really beautiful. A little bit like a kind of foxglove in terms of height. The lovely thing about that is if you can weave them through any border, they lift your eye up. They come into flower sort of mid to late summer when other things might be dying back. A really good kind of cottage garden plant, likes full sun to partial shade, needs to be in free draining soil. Won't be very happy if you make it sit in very damp soil. All the way through this area, I've always put some food. There's black currants, there's been raspberries. And I really like the idea of gorilla gardening having this kind of other element in that you can come and forage. So I love the idea that you could come and pick blueberries. People tend to grow blueberries in pots because then you can fill the pot full of compost and create the right environment for them. So I've been experimenting with growing them in the ground, but just incorporating lots and lots of compost. In the beginning, what you have to do is you really have to dig a good amount of ericaceous compost in. So essentially, I've created a pot within the soil. And now I'm going to take my blueberries out and I'm just going to plant them in this ericaceous compost like that. When you're establishing any kind of fruit bush, you actually don't want them to produce fruit in their first year. You want to put all their energy into making a really good root system. So, however disheartening it is, if you have to take the berries off. With all of these shrubs, it's really important that they get a really good long soak of water and that you also continue to water while they get established. They've been grown in a pot where they get watered regularly and now they're suddenly in the big, bad, wide world. And it may look a little bit sparse, but the point about all of these plants is that they're going to grow much bigger. So I don't want to pack them in too tight because I don't give them enough room to expand. So hopefully it's going to mature into something really quite beautiful, something that lots of people will feel that they want to take care of. Most importantly, there's going to be lots of flowers over a long season of interest, and that's really important for our pollinators. It's definitely a lot more interesting than just a patch of grass.